All right, so what does work? We've seen what doesn't work, but what does work, spoiler alert, it's the Socratic method. You're working with your child on her homework, and now she says five times seven is 36. Of course, five times seven is 35, and she got the wrong answer. So what do you do now? All right, so we have a little bit of background to try to guess what the, the right, the right, a better approach might be. You know there's a far, far better way to address this situation, which of course occurs all the time than saying wrong or are you sure or let me help you. When used regularly, this one homework helper tip will single-handedly remove stress and add interest and excitement to your child's schoolwork. I can safely say this because the technique I'm gonna recommend, that's part and parcel of Schiller math, was postulated by an ancient philosopher and is used today by Harvard Business School and many other higher ed institutions. So let's drill down into an example <clears throat> with a Schiller math recommended way. The parent says five times seven, the child says 36. The parent then says, without missing a beat, what's six times six? So the parent didn't say, that's not right. The parent didn't say, uh, let's try another one. The parent just simply goes back with another question. And by the way, with Schiller math, we have this, this uh, ball, foam ball, it doesn't break anything. Uh, that you can throw as hard as you want. It slows down because it's got a lot of air in it. And uh, we, we encourage parents and children to use the ball you know, when you're asking questions and answering questions because it involves the large motor groups, the, the thighs, the abs, the, the shoulders in, uh, involved with doing math. And kids love it because they don't want to be sitting in a chair. And so this is great. So the parent might throw the ball to the child five times seven. The child will throw the ball back saying 36. The parent will throw the ball back to the child saying six times six. Now the child grabs the ball and thinks a little bit and says 36. And isn't that interesting? Because the next thing without the parent saying a word, the child thinks and says, oh, wait, Five times seven is 35, not 36. If six times six is 36, five times seven couldn't be 36. Oops, the child just discovered her own mistake. How cool is that? And the parent can then say, wow, you discovered your previous error. Great job. The parent never said, no, that's wrong. Instead, the parent, using the Socratic method, helped the child discover his own error by asking questions. So let's break down this conversation. This is hard. What actually happened looks simple. It's hard. Let's break this down so you can use it with confidence in your own school. And you'll, you'll find you'll use this every single day. And you know what? You'll find you're not only, only using it with your children, <laughs> you're using it with everybody in your life. A key technique the parent used in this example was to ask a different question, what's six times six, whose answer, 36, was the wrong answer the child gave to the previous question. I just want to let that sink in a little bit because that is the, the core, you know, behind this. So we're going to ask a different question whose answer was the wrong answer to the previous question, but it's the right answer to this question. So after the child says five times seven is 36, the parent asks, What's six times six, which is a different question whose answer 36 is the same as the incorrect answer to the previous question. That gets, the idea here is for the child to recognize that they've made a mistake and the parent using the Socratic method is helping the child do that. We're gently leading the process so the child can recognize that he or she made an error. And this is what we came up with at Schiller Math to do this. So we're using the Socratic method and this is a Schiller Math technique that we, we use. But it's hard. We think the best way to help our children is to point out mistakes right away. But this actually hurts their learning. They miss the opportunity to struggle and to think creatively, and it takes away their initiative. Now, in this example, the child has the initiative. The child's taking ownership of her learning. She's identifying her own mistakes. That's powerful, and it's endorphin releasing. When others tell them they've done wrong, they're not growing up. But when children learn to recognize their own mistakes, they're empowered and they're not, more important, they're not afraid to make mistakes because they know they can fix them. So to, to illustrate this, I used a simple multiplication example, but this, this technique, and again, to my knowledge, it's only used in Schiller math, asking another question whose answer is the wrong answer to the previous question can be useful for anything from arithmetic to factoring to logic to probability, algebra, geometry. We use it in language arts for, for grammar, parts of speech, spelling, you name it. 
uh, it can involve voice, drawing, the body, music, manipulatives, anything. It's a very, very powerful technique.